to Pastor Bumi Uwalabi, the senior pastor of Kingdom Embassy Church. He's a prophetic and dynamic preacher and teacher of the word. Get ready for a transformational experience as you listen to this message. Taught his disciples how to pray. We've been actually talking, it's been a very long series and I've been trying to kind of big, break the series down in chunks. We started with what we called uh, the three wayfarers. The three wayfarers. That was how we started. Some people have been requesting for the first message uh, on that particular series. The message is available on CD. You can have a copy today if you so uh, desire. That was how we started. We talked about different categories of people in life. Uh, those who are victims of destiny liquidation. That was how we started. We spoke about those who destinies are under a foreclosure and we also spoke about those who have settled for the status quo those are the second categories of people in life those who settle for the status quo those who believe and they key their lives to the average they do not really strive for excellence we also have a group of people called the champions they are destined victors mandated winners and I believe very strongly that in the house we have victors and we have champions. I took time to give definitions of who a champion is and I gave us different dynamics of championship. And uh, in the course of that uh, series, uh, uh, the Lord ministered to me that we had to talk about this school of prayer. There is no how you can ever be a champion if you are not a praying or a prayerful believer. It takes somebody who is enlisted in the school of prayer to become victorious over the battles of life remember i share with us the bible says we fight not against flesh and blood but we fight against principalities against powers against rulers of darkness and against spiritual wickedness in high places those are the forces that we are contending with and i told us you cannot use physical weapon to fight spiritual battle you can never win that battle it's not possible you can only engage spiritual battle with spiritual weapon and one of the weapons of believers is prayer and prayer is not just opening your mouth and just saying words you know to god it's more than that there is a depth of prayer as jesus christ taught his disciples how to pray share with us you know from that series talking about the foundation of prayer begins all all begins with relationship our father who art in heaven our father our father father son relationship father daughter relationship if you do not have that foundational relationship with god you are just wasting your time in the place of prayer and that is why a lot of people cannot tarry in the presence of god for a very long period of time because they lack relationship I've ever been with a stranger you don't really know and you just say hello hello and you are trying to really flow and you are not really flowing you just keep to yourself have you ever been around somebody like that before you really wanted to talk about because there's no rapport there's no relationship there's no platform for communication and you just discover that you know you can't just flow and that is the level and the state of so many people they don't have relationship with god so when they come to a point of praying there are no words to say because there's no relationship but when a child i my 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 wife you know can actually be a with to these my children they talk all all forms of this oh my goodness and i i engage them in the talk we talk we use the same language we use the same language say uh-huh uh uh-huh uh -huh. I, I just to keep, keep flowing with them they, they love to engage me in, in, in conversation and I love to be with them also in that kind of conversation we dance together, we play together, they sing songs in fact they raise songs and we will be sick. because of relationship we can spend a lot hours together we are not tired of one another, praise the Lord that is relationship very, very important in the place of prayer our Father who art in heaven and our, our shows that it's not just my Father he is also your father so nobody can lay claim on god and say he is the only one that knows god praise the lord we are all children of god is that not so and so if we are children of god as we develop relationship with god we must also have relationship with one another that book sister read psalm 133 how good and how pleasant is it for brethren to dwell together in unity the bible says in the book of hebrews do not forsake assembling together can you see so god encourages relationship with one another as we also relate with him some people will say 
world tv is my is that's where i do my church on sunday all the churches are bad you are the best person on the face of the earth i understand that very well you know and that's why tv becomes your church no 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 no. we have to come together the bible says iron sharpens iron so a man sharpens the countenance of his friends relationship among brothers is very very important because it's not just my father he is our father and like that sister was reading family stays together if you are a member of the family of christ we stay together you don't isolate yourself am i making sense to anybody here our father what in heaven hallowed be thy name that was the message for last week that was a very beautiful one if you are not here last week you better get that cd copy that was very beautiful hallowed be thy name until you get to a point at which you see the holiness of god you will still think that you have a right when you see the awesomeness of God, John the Beloved, the Bible says that when he saw the glory of God, when he saw the Lord, he, he crumbled as dead, as dead. When you get to the place of prayer, you have no rights before God. Praise the Lord. All you have to do is to see the, the holiness, the awesomeness, the righteousness of the Almighty God, his majesty, and then you crumble at his feet and you say, Lord, I do not have anything to lay claim on as to you intervening in my life but i trust your mercy i spoke about mercy last week also mercy is the key praise the lord and i pray that god almighty will have you at his mercy seat in the mighty name of the lord jesus and so the next portion of that prayer is thy kingdom come as we all know uh, kingdom and the name of our church is kingdom embassy i can preach this all year i'm telling you i can preach about king, the kingdom all year just talking about kingdom kingdom alone kingdom members it's a very very significant name the message of the gospel is the message of the kingdom is the message of the kingdom if you read matthew chapter 3 verses 1 to 2 matthew 3 1 to 2 when john the uh, john the baptist was announcing the coming of the lord jesus christ look at what he said as he began his message in those days came john the baptist i read john matthew 3 one to two i don't know if uh, casey can help us with the with that, that thing you see we are we are novices see us uh, thank god you are here praise the lord in those days came john the baptist preaching in the wilderness of judea and saying repent ye for what for the kingdom of heaven is at hand that was the message of the kingdom that ushered in jesus christ the ministry of jesus christ to this dispensation and if you read matthew chapter 4 verse 17 matthew chapter 4 verse 17 matthew 4 17 from that time jesus began to preach and to say repent for what for the kingdom of heaven is at hand about kingdom kingdom john the, ba the beloved talk, uh, sorry, john the baptist talked about the kingdom jesus also talked about the kingdom message of jesus the ministry of jesus is about the kingdom so the reason for repentance is not so that you can get bentley the reason for repentance is not so that you can live in a mansion the reason for repentance is not so that you can have children the reason for repentance is not so that you can get a beautiful wife in the church the reason for repentance is because the kingdom of heaven is at hand where many miss it in the church is because they have a very erroneous understanding of those for which they are in the kingdom and when the purpose of a thing is not known the abuse of it is inevitable see you need to understand the reason why you have come to the kingdom you have not come to socialize you have not come to 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 you know for any other thing but the reason you are in the kingdom is because the kingdom of heaven is at hand and if you read matthew chapter 10 matthew chapter 10 verse 7 as jesus commissioned the 12 disciples as he commissioned the 12 disciples listen to what he said matthew 10 7 as ye go preach saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand that is the commission of the church the church is strategically mandated to preach the message of the kingdom to preach the message of the kingdom so when you are talking about christianity christianity is completely different from religion christianity is not religion at all i will still be sharing more lies on that so preach the kingdom don't preach religion you don't preach do's and don'ts don't wear skirt wear top don't wear pen 
where you get and, and you see the other time as i was talking with my you know as we were coming to, to church i was just recounting of a particular poor general overseer uh, wife and because of the kind of messages that they have been preaching and all that she used um what is it called mentholatum or rub to oh, on her lips and it generated a lot of controversy it was a big fight in the church hey the wife of general overseer has used lipstick can you see so people have bought into into blasphemy they are bought into error that is not the purpose of the kingdom praise the lord either you like if you like put mascara on that's not that is not important here praise the lord hallelujah that doesn't mean you should go naked yeah yeah that doesn't mean if your skirt is too short i will say usher please move can you transfer her to row number three or four and put some two people two hefty people to shock <laughs> so that she doesn't move and uh, that person doesn't go to restroom at all today let us just tell <laughs> praise the lord somebody as you go preach say the kingdom of heaven is at hand thy kingdom come matthew 24 verse 14 Matthew 24 verse 14 message a utterances from the master Jesus himself and this gospel of religion and this gospel of Christianity and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations and then shall the end come until the church will focus preaching the message of the kingdom the end is not going to come on time there are so many messages that we listen to out there these days. Sometimes you begin to wonder, is this, is this, is it really church? Or has it turned to another seminar or something? You see, we, we have lost focus. The message that Jesus told us to preach is the message of the kingdom. Ah, the question now is, what is a kingdom? I think that's a very good question to ask. Is that also, what is a kingdom? What is a kingdom? Uh, if you look at that word, that word actually contains two different nouns. Two different nouns. King and dom. King, domain. That's the meaning of kingdom. Kingdom. King, domain. So, and okay, if we have those two words here, the question is, who is a king? Is that a possible question to ask? Who is a king? A king is an individual who has an authority over a domain. Am I making sense to anybody here? A king is someone who has an authority over a domain. Someone who has rulership over a territory is called or is referred to as a king. So, when you're talking about a domain, therefore, a domain is therefore the territory of the king. Is that not so? So, a domain is the territory of the king. Now, there can never be a king without a domain. And there can never be a domain without a king. Is that making sense to anybody here? Uh, is that making sense to anybody here? There can never be a king without a domain. And there can never be a domain without a king. Very, very important. It's important to know that. So a king, therefore, has an indisputable and incontestable dominance and governance over his territory or domain. Because that is what makes him a king. For as long as he remains a king, he has an indisputable, incontestable dominance and governance over his domain, over his territory. I pray today God will raise up kings in this house. I say kings will be raised in this message. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus, you will no longer be subjected to the whims and the caprices of the powers of darkness. You will rule in the name of Jesus. So, therefore, when you pray, you pray for the kingdom of God to come upon the earth. You are simply requesting him to take over the rulership of the earth, to take over the rulership of your life. Let your kingdom come upon me. Let your kingdom come upon my family. Let your kingdom come upon my community. I pray today over this community, let the kingdom of God come. So, when you are praying, God, let your kingdom come. Let your, let your sovereignty, your rule, let, let, it, let, let it permeate my life and my community. It seems quite ironical because the Bible says in Psalm 24 verse 1 that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. So, if the earth is the Lord's, 
then why do we keep inviting his kingdom to come? Am I making sense to anybody? I'm trying to add some things together here. You know, I believe we're all intelligent people and these are some of the things that, that comes, you know, in our minds and we just figure out what is really going on here. The art is the Lord. That's what the scripture says in Psalm 24 verse 1. But as true as that scripture is, God has willed the earth to man. Ah. I say God has willed the earth to man. Now, you can never will what you don't own. That's, that, that, that's, that makes sense. I think that makes sense. You can't give what you don't have. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. That is, is valid. It's true. But God has willed the earth to man. Go to Psalm 115 verse 16. Psalm 115 verse 16. These are scriptural truth. Scriptural truth. You can't argue this out, sir. God has willed the earth to man. We are here to rule. I say you are here to rule. You are born to rule. You are mandated to reign. <laughs> the highest heavens belongs to the Lord. But the heart. He has done what? I can't hear you. I need feedback. I, he has given to who? He has given to Satan? He has given to the devil, to demons? No, 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 no. The Bible says here, the heavens of heaven belongs to God, but for the heart that he owns, he has willed it to man. But the unfortunate thing is in the book of Genesis, man lost the title deeds of his possession on the altar of sin and willful disobedience to God's instruction. That was where man lost it. And that is why there has been contention over what belongs to man since Adam up till now right from the days of john the baptist the kingdom of heaven suffers violence and the violent take it by force it is mine i take it by force every of your inheritance that the enemies have dispossessed you of you are taking it by force today in jesus name everything that heaven has willed to you to take possession of that the enemies have taken out of your life today you are recovering I said today you are recovering. So the earth belongs to man. But Satan has used deception and perversion to take over the possession of creation. He has used deception. I've had somebody, if I had a preacher, I, I mean somebody I really respect very well, but perhaps sometimes we have uh, differences here and there. And he's saying Satan has power. Satan does not have power. Ah, Jesus is all power. All, all, all. Not some power. All power. <laughs> all power in heaven and on earth. And underneath there has been given unto me. All power. So if all power be all. I mean we all know the meaning of all. We, we, all, we can all of them. Or if somebody has taken all. Then what is left? Tell your neighbor the devil has no power. You better say it as if you believe it. The devil has no power. The Bible says, because of our willful disobedience, before, because we allow the devil to take our possession, then he lay claims of what does not belong to him. If somebody stole your property and that person is caught, is it not, by, is it not right for, for you to take back what belongs to you? Why would you allow your family to be taken by the devil? Why will you allow your hair to be taken by the devil? Why will you allow your destiny to be taken by the devil? Today you are taking over. I say you are taking over today. I say you are taking over today. The devil has no right to take what belongs to you. He has no right at all. So the devil therefore is an illegal occupant of the earth. Ah, maybe I need to repeat that. I say, the devil is an illegal occupant of the earth. The devil is an illegal occupant of your life. Is an illegal occupant of your family. When you catch an illegal man, you send him to jail. Today we are sending the devil to jail. Before years back, we send the devil to Sahara Desert. That was a wrong prayer. Boko Haram is in Sahara Desert. 
Now the demons, they are, they are congregating in Sahara Desert and they are bombing Nigeria. We are no longer sending the devil to Sahara Desert. <laughs> we send the devil to the sea and all that. That is why we have all this Niger Delta crisis. But now we send the devil back to where he belongs. We send him to hell. I said we send him to hell, sir. I said we send him to hell, sir. If you be the shout, hallelujah. <laughs> hallelujah. <laughs> but the Bible says, if you read Revelations 12, 12, Revelations 12, 12, see, see, see what the scripture says. We are doing the scriptures here. I believe our families and friends are enjoying this message. I'm just giving out little by little, you know, it's step by step, step by step. Mm -hmm. Revelations 12, 12. Therefore rejoice ye heavens and you who dwell in, the, in them. But woe to the earth and the sea because the devil has gone down to you. He is filled with fury because he knows that his time is short. I have been reading the scriptures for years. But I'm telling you last night, God opened my eyes to see this particular scripture from a completely different dimension. He said, the devil has come down with fury and is ready to wreck because he knows that his time is short. What does that mean? His time of dominance and governance over your life is short. You are not saying amen very well. Now, the question now is, well, uh, when, when you say, well, his time is short, then time therefore becomes very relative. That, I mean, the word short becomes very relative. Is that not so? Short becomes relative. How short is the short? Is it going to be this year, next year, 10 years, 15 years? It becomes relative. Am I making sense to anybody here? Yeah. So, so then how do we now know the time that the scripture is talking about? The distance in time as we read in that scripture is, be, is measured between the time of ignorance and the, the time of the revelations of the truth. Am I making sense to anybody? So if it takes you 10 years to grasp the revelations of the truth, he has dominance. But the day you are able to practically absorb the truth of the word of God, he loses his grip over your life. I say he loses his grip over your life. I say he loses his grip over your life. The day you practically apply yourself to the veracity of the word of God and pragmatically embrace the infallible word of God which is true and can never be disapproved that day the devil loses his governance over your life John 8 32 and ye shall know the truth and the truth you know will set you free the devil has a short time over your life I'm telling you in the next second if you can absorb the truth that I will not submit my destiny to the devil. The devil loses his grip over your life and destiny. The distance between the time the devil has over your life and the time of your liberation is between the time you are ignorant and the time you practically embrace the truth of the word of God. Now, let me for the call, you know, for the, for the sake of this discourse, unravel just one scriptural truth unto you for your immediate emancipation. What? Just one scripture, just one, just one, for your immediate liberation. For, right, I'm telling you, after the scripture, you, your eyes of understanding will be enlightened. John chapter 16. John chapter 16. I, I'll start from verse 7, but I'm actually going to the last portion of that particular scriptures. John chapter 16 beginning from verse 7 nevertheless I tell you the truth it is expedient for you that I go away for if I go not away the comforter will not come to you but if I depart I will send him that is the Holy Spirit so the Holy Spirit is not it it's him is that not so it's a person somebody that has a personality it's him so I will send him unto you verse 8 and when he is come he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. The word judgment is very important there. Of sin because they believe not on him. Of righteousness because I go to my father and ye see me no more. Of judgment. Of judgment because the prince of this world is judged. <laughs> 
He said, the prince of this world, the one that laid claim of the, the, the governance of this world is already under, under judgment. Not will be judged, is judged. Uh, I believe very strongly that we remember the functionality of our, uh, we call that a primary auxiliary verb. Don't let me take you to English here. You see, it's judged. That is a state. It's, it's, it's a concluded here. Praise the Lord. He said the prince of this world is under judgment. So one of the ministries of the Holy Spirit, I'm still going that somewhere in regards to that scripture. I'm going somewhere there. But one of the ministries of the Holy Spirit is to bring judgment over every disobedience over your life. Every force that is disobedient to the word of God. Every force that is contending against the word and the counsel of God over your life is under judgment today. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. So by coercion and by compulsion with resolute spiritual dissension and contention, man is destined to take possession of his possession. Everything that the enemies have stolen by coercion and by dissension, with all compulsion, you will take over in the mighty name of Jesus. You are not leaving anything to the camp of the enemies. Everything they have deprived you of this year, you are taking them back in Jesus' name. Please understand that scripture. The prince or the god of this world, Satan, is judged. Listen, no king ever wears his crown to the prison. I say no king ever wears his crown to the prison. No, 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 no. The moment judgment comes upon a king, he is stripped naked of his kingship title. Am I making sense to anybody? The prince of this world is under judgment. No king ever wears his crown to the prison. The day the judgment comes upon a king, he is stripped naked of his kingship title. He is stripped naked of all his crowns. Is that not so? He is stripped naked of all his royal paraphernalia. Everything that is that makes him to be a king is taken away from him. Am I making sense to anybody here? Am I making sense to anybody here? So a king capitulates and abdicates his throne when he is dethroned. A king leaves, is ejected out of his throne when he is dethroned. Every throne that the enemies have erected over your life. And they say we have governance over this aspect of your life. Today the devil is dethroned in Jesus name. Because the devil is under judgment, I say he is dethroned over your destiny. In the name of the Lord Jesus. You remember very well, you remember, uh, well, Mr. Nebuchadnezzar. So he was King Nebuchadnezzar. Boy, became, when he was stripped naked of his, uh, a him became a it. I don't know if that is making any sense to anybody here. A him, a him. Suddenly was turned to a it. It became an animal. Is that not so? Because when he was ejected and excreted out of the palace, he was exiled into the jungle. They removed his king from him. The scepter of authority with which he was using to rule Babylon, they took it away from him. They sent him out of the palace. He began to crawl with his hands and he was eating, eating grass like, like, like cow. He was taken out of his throne. The king of this world, the prince of this world, is under judgment. The operations of the past of hell over your life is under judgment. I say it is under judgment. I say it is under judgment. Because Satan has been judged, he has been stripped of all his royal paraphernalia. Everything that makes him to gain dominance over your life. Because he's under judgment, he has lacked that authority. He does not carry that authority anymore. Am I making sense to anybody here? I said that devil does not carry that authority anymore. You can only gain dominance over somebody by authority or by manipulation. Two ways by which you can gain dominance over a man. By authority and by manipulation. The devil has lost that authority. 
the only thing that he has left is manipulation. That is why the Bible says, for we are not ignorant of the wiles of the devil. Not that we are not ignorant of the power of the devil. So we are wise. What he is left with is manipulation. In any way by which the enemies are manipulating your destiny, today I break it off over your destiny in Jesus' name. I destroy every power of manipulation over your life and over your destiny today in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Your health has been manipulated and compromised. Today I take authority over sickness in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Your finance is under satanic siege. Today I break the siege in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Now, how does if, like I said, two ways by which you can get dominance over a man, by authority and by manipulation. If he has lost the authority and what he has left is manipulation. How does he use very effectively his manipulation? It's through ignorance. Through ignorance. You can only manipulate a man to the extent to which he is ignorant. Am I making sense to anybody here? You can only manipulate a man to the extent to which he is ignorant. <laughs> My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. So it is therefore an error of scriptural interpretation to believe that Satan has a hold over your life. It is an error of scriptural interpretation. The devil has no hold over your life. He, at least he does not have the right to have a hold over your life. And so in any area of your life where you have been held down, today I break the hold in Jesus' name. My people are destroyed. Hosea chapter 4 verse 6 Hosea 4 6 Hosea 4 6 My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge Man, man Man can gain governance and dominion Of his territory which rightfully belongs to him When he prayerfully and practically Allows the kingdom of God To come upon him Thy kingdom come what brings you back to your original strategic position with God is the kingdom of God to come upon you. And today the kingdom is coming upon you in Jesus' name. God will be violating his laws if he imposes his kingdom upon man. That is why Jesus says, pray thy kingdom come. God is going to be violating his law if he comes to impose his wisdom upon you. That's why God will not coerce you to do anything. Not at all, not at all. He's not going to. That's why you see a lot of people they are misbehaving because they believe they have the right to make decisions. And so, God, whatever I want to do is what I want to do. He's and God is not going to come to say forcefully you must do it. Never, never. God will never do that. If He does that, then He violates His will. Because if you read Genesis chapter 6, verse 3, Genesis 6 3, God says, My spirit will no longer contend with human beings. No, no. I can come to you and tell you what to do. You will be left to either do it or refuse to do it. I'm not going to coerce you to do what you don't want to do. My spirit will not strike in with man. And if you read Deuteronomy chapter 30 verse 19. Deuteronomy 30 19. This is a very fantastic scripture. Deuteronomy 30 verse 19. This day I call the heavens and the earth as witnesses against you that I have said before you life and death blessing and causes now choose life i can advise you choose life that you and your children may live so god says here before every man is life and is death before as you are here seated today you have life and you have death it is your choice to choose which one you really want to go with that is that is the law of god that is the law of god and it's important for you to hear this the honor and the glory of a king is to be in charge of his territory. The honor and the glory of a king is to be in charge of his domain. Um, perhaps, I know some of us may not really understand uh, this uh, particular dialect. Uh, you know, in the, in the uh, you know, in our end there, we have what we call the king, and we also have what we call the ballet. Ballet comes with little cap. You understand? But Bale pays homage to a king. Why you have Bale is that he's a weak king. He does not have full control. The glory and the honor of a king is to have authority. 
and governs over his domain. Every of your territory that the enemies have taken over, today you are recovering in the mighty name of Jesus. I said today you are recovering in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Because in Genesis chapter 1 verse 26, after God finished creating man, he said, let man have what? Let man have what? You can't have a dominion if you don't have a domain. You cannot have a domain if you are not a king. Is it making sense to anybody here? So at the onset, at creation, when God finished creating you, says, I made you to be a king. You won't be a slave. Every spirit of slavery and servitude over the life of somebody here, I break in Jesus' name. I say every spirit of slavery and servitude, I destroy over your life in the mighty name of Jesus. Say, uh, well, maybe, I should, maybe, maybe I should do a quick digression here. This was of slavery and servitude. How do you know you are a slave? How do you know you are a slave? That's a very, very important. When you are bringing your potential to the table, and what you are being paid is below your potential. You are a slave. You are a slave. That's how you, how do you know a slave? That's a slave. You know that if I have my own business, I can employ people and begin to pay them. Then also, and make a lot of money. But here I am. I am stuck with this old man who keeps using me. And what is paying me at the end of the day cannot even is not even enough to get gas in my tank. You are going to work, and your car gets stuck on the way. You don't even have enough money to get gas to go and work for. Ah, every slave master that has put you under bondage, I break you off in Jesus' name. <laughs> slavery, slavery. We don't understand. We think we thought all oh, the days of slavery are over. I'm telling you, where is 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 a is a this is a new this westernized slavery. Westernized slavery. Two kings cannot be enthroned on the same seat at the same time. These are key words that I'm saying here that you must say. Two kings cannot be on the throne at the same time. It is an aberration. It is an aberration. It's not possible. So everything that has enthroned himself over your life, I am dethroning them today. You're not saying them very well. I say everything that has enthroned himself over your life or itself over your life, I dethrone in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. You are a king. Tell your neighbor you are a king. Say loud and clear, you are a king. Are you not? Say loud and clear, you are a king. People are cheating here. Now, I don't like cheating. I'm a teacher. I don't like cheating at all. Okay, tell your neighbor, I am a king. king. If you are a king, shout hallelujah. (laughs) Hallelujah. I said, you are a king. You are a king. You are a king. You are a king. If you know what that means, you will will jump up on your your, your feet. If you know what that, to be a king, to be a king. To be a king means to be in control. To be a king is to be in charge. I decree and I declare the anointing of kingship to rest upon your head today in Jesus' name. They have enslaved you long enough. The day of your liberation has finally come. I stand as the oracle of the almighty God. I dip my tongue in the blood of Jesus. I speak with authority and with audacity. Every slave master over your life I put them under divine arrest in the name of Jesus. Your crown that has been stolen, I decree today is a day of restoration for you. I say today is a day of restoration for you. Every veil of ignorance, every veil of ignorance, I remove by fire. In the name of Jesus, let the king shout hallelujah. I will stop here today. Family and friends who are here today, please be here next week Sunday. 
I encourage you to be here next week, and I, I, I pray with you by the message of God. I pray with you. First Peter 2 9. First Peter 2 9, as you stand on your feet, we're about to pray and take possession of everything that the enemies have taken out of our lives. First Peter 2 9. But ye are his chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people that you should show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. He says, You are a royal priesthood. Royal priesthood. The anointing of royalty to rest upon you today. I said the anointing of royalty to rest upon you in the mighty name of Jesus. Revelations 5.10 before, before we pray. Revelations 5.10. Revelations 5.10. And God has made us, on, and Jesus has made us unto our God kings. Kings. I want the kings to shout kings. kings. Say loud and clear kings. kings. The manifestation and the revelations of Jesus Christ is to enthrone you back to where the enemies have dethroned you. That is the, mis that is the ministry of Jesus Christ. Thy kingdom come. When the kingdom of God comes upon the earth, because he has willed the art to you, he makes you, make you a king. He ordains you to be a king, to be in charge. You are going to pray. If you are here, you have not given your life to Christ, you are under the yoke of satanic slavery. You need liberation. The first thing I encourage you to do is to make the Lord Jesus Christ your Lord and personal Savior. Perhaps you are listening at home. You have not made the Lord Jesus Christ your Lord and personal Savior. Today is your day of salvation. Tomorrow may be too late. If you are here, all eyes bowed, all eyes closed as you pray. You want to make the Lord Jesus Christ your Lord and personal Savior. The anointing of kingship, you want it to rest upon you. Please raise up your hands wherever you are. You haven't given your life to Christ. You want to make today a day of supernatural appointment with the Almighty God. Is anybody here? And perhaps if you are at home, you want to make the Lord Jesus Christ your Lord and personal Savior, you can kneel down where you are at home and begin to pray for the mercy of God. Ask for his forgiveness. Ask him to have mercy on you, to redeem you, to restore you. Confess your sins unto him. Make him your Lord and personal Savior. And your life will never remain the same again. And I want you to decree now. Every of my territory that the enemies have encroached into, today, by the virtue of the anointing that has been released upon me, I take it over. It could be your health, it could be your family, it could be your finance, it could be your career, it could be your destiny, it could be your future, it could be your work with God. Whatever is it that the enemies have taken over, you know that they have encroached and they keep pushing you in, they keep pushing you, they keep pushing you, and they are taking you away from what God has ordained you to possess. Every territory that the enemies have encroached in my life, today I send the enemies back in. I break the yoke of limitations over my life. I release the anointing of kingship over my territory. I provoke you to pray now in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Begin to pray and take possession of all that heaven has offered unto you. You cannot be deprived of what rightfully belongs unto you. Take over your territory in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Everything that the devil has told you that is against the counsel of God, reject it now in the mighty name of Jesus. Refute it in the mighty name of Jesus. Malanda baso parende bosotoria. Randa basotoria. Are you praying? Pray as a king. Pray as one that has authority. Pray as one that has authority. Pray as one that has authority. Take over your territory. Success is within your domain. Every spirit of failure. I destroy you in the mighty name of Jesus. Good health is within your domain. Every sickness in the bone, sickness in the blood, every form of ailment, I rebuke you, I cast you out in Jesus' name. Healthy marriage is within your domain. Your marriage is not permitted to suffer shipwreck. It is not the will of God. The enemy has done this. Take over what belongs unto you. I 
are there areas in this land that you are deprived of what you know you ought to possess for whatever reason at all ah decree today i take possession of all that heaven has offered me are you praying are you praying take possession as a king take possession as a king take possession the heavens of heavens are gods but the earth he has given unto man and so whatever that will not allow you to thrive on earth take authority over it in the mighty name of Jesus if the earth has been given unto you then you must thrive on the face of the earth in jesus mighty name we pray i'll be sharing more on that uh, next week but i just want to quickly bring a prayer point out here very very important when moses was made a king god said i have made you to become a god unto pharaoh you are a god unto pharaoh <laughs> god has no fear of nobody praise the lord pharaoh at that time was uh, uh, it was you can't you can't you you the, how would you even as get to his palace talk less of talking to him who are you it's not possible if you even get to his palace wrongly you will be killed immediately you will be you'll be you'll be you'll be killed but god told moses i have made you a king unto pharaoh i have made pharaoh to become a barley now you are a king unto pharaoh <laughs> uh, a bala is like a sheaf it's just a little bit uh, be above sheaf <laughs> say I have removed the crown of rulership over Pharaoh I have made him to be a little sheaf now Moses you have become his king everything that has been oppressing you before now today they are under your feet I said today they are under your feet. When Moses got unto Pharaoh, I want to bring a prayer point here. He made a demand of his possession. God has sent me to deliver the children of Israel and I must deliver them. Oh, he struggled a lot and there were a lot of contentions. But here what happened here in Exodus chapter 10 verse 24, when the heat of the battle became very fierce, Pharaoh began, began to give in or cave in. But he was not going to let go totally. And Pharaoh called unto Moses and said, go ye, serve the Lord. Only let your flocks and your hearts be stayed. Let your little ones also go with you. He said, go and serve God but in sickness. Go and serve God in poverty. Go and serve God without job. Go and serve God without breakthrough. You know, I can allow you to go and serve God, but the blessings that accompany salvation, let me hold that down. Moses said, Thou must give unto us also sacrifices and burnt offerings that we may sacrifice unto the Lord our God. Our cattle shall also go with us and there shall not an hoof be left behind. Do you understand that, sir? Do you, he said, everything that heaven asks for me, I'm taking over. I am not leaving anything behind. That man said, I'm a king. I make authority. I make rules here. And whatever I say, go. Even though what you say that I, sh I should hold back from you, but as a king, I speak with authority. I'm not going to leave anything behind. 
you are going to pray. I don't care what is it that the enemies have taken out of your life, out of your life. Maybe it's your marriage. Maybe it's in your finance. Maybe it's in your academics. Right? Listen, go and serve God. But you won't make it. Ah, I want you to decree and pray this prayer after me. Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus. Every of my possession under satanic siege I recover by fire in the name of Jesus pray in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus your health under satanic siege recover by fire as a king I'm not leaving anything behind good health healthy marriage wonderful career great blessings everything that God has for me I take possession in the name of Jesus don't let the devil bargain with you don't bargain with the devil take authority over him don't appease the devil take authority over him I am not leaving my children behind as for me and my house we shall serve the Lord go and serve the Lord and we will make your children perverse I recover my children in the name of the Lord Jesus I recover my home in the name of Jesus every Free of my belongings under satanic siege. I release the fire of God to recover in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Oh God, let thy kingdom come. Let thy kingdom come. Let thy kingdom come to take over in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Father, we thank you. We give you praise. What a sweet God we serve. Awesome God. Awesome God. Just awesome. <laughs> you are awesome, Daddy. We love you. We thank you for the revelation and the impartation of your word. We give you praise and we exalt your name for what your word has orchestrated in the life of every soul under my voice. I give you praise for your relief. I thank you for a breakthrough. I appreciate you, King of Glory, for removing the veil of ignorance. I thank you for causing us to walk in the revelations of your mystery. We give you praise and we give you glory. Be thou exalted in the name of Jesus. And so, Lord Father, I stand in the authority that is in your name and in your word. I decree over every soul here specifically I pray for the person who has the loudest amen in this sanctuary today everything the enemies have stolen recover by fire as Jesus was passing by many other people many people also were calling his name but there was one man called blind Bartimaeus who understood that if he should, should miss that moment he might not recover it he shouted loud and they held him they said you are in the church your own amen is too much say amen you know in a, in a westerners way say amen with chewing gum in your mouth say amen and that man was shouting, Jesus, son of David. And Jesus stood still. The person that has the loudest amen received this. Everything the enemies have stolen in your life, in your marriage, over your children, today, by fire, recover! I said 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 recover! 
I said recover. 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 Recover in Jesus name. Begin to thank God for answered prayers. Begin to give him praise and give him glory.